Grand Oak Podrick was a guaranteed champion. He was about 20 sacred shards worth. When I initially looked at his kit, I wasn't too impressed. And then I read it again. And I was like, yeah, no, his, this actually looks pretty bonkers. I do want to take him into Hydra. That's predominantly where I think he's going to shine. I also put him in my Hard Fire Knight team, guys, and I can do Hard Fire Knight 10. His A1 has a chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally's active skill by two turns. So someone else on your team is going to have their active skills cooldown reduced so they can access their moves faster. And in two turns is pretty nice especially when a lot of us have four turn cooldown moves. His A2 books down to four turns is an ally attack. And then he restores allies destroyed max HP and then places continuous heal for two turns. Pretty huge, especially for something like Fire Knight where you need a lot of people hitting the boss so that the shield can come down, especially on hard 10, where the shield is at 21 counts. His move restores allies destroyed max HP. And right now there's only two other champions besides Podrig that do it. Marishka and some mythical champion. Someone in my comment section pointed that out that, yeah, there's a mythical champion that does it, but because it's so inaccessible to uh, quite a majority of us, even those who do pay heavily in this game, mythical champions seem to escape. Most of us. Restoring destroyed max HP is huge for places like the Hard Fire Knight, where you're having your max HP destroyed, or going up against the Sand Devil where your max HP is getting destroyed. Continuous heal is obviously pretty nice as well because, well, you know, you're healing. He's, he he's helping to keep everybody alive. A3 fills turn meter of all allies by 20%, then removes all debuffs from all allies and then places increased speed on all allies for two turns. I think I haven't done this on the Dark Fae, but I do believe that this champion will probably help you out in the Dark Fae as well with the turn meter fill and increased speed so that you're going faster than the Dark Fae. His passive, it says one turn cooldown, but that basically means that every single time he takes a turn, depending on the type of champion, they're going to receive a nice big buff. An attack-based champion is going to receive the big version of increased attack. Defense-based champion will receive the big version of increased defense, support, increased accuracy. And then if you're an HP-based champion, you get a shield buff. So no matter what, you're receiving a buff of some sort. The other thing is he has an increase to speed in dungeons by 25%. This is pretty fast. For an example, for Fire Knight, Razzlevarg at 20%. Before that, it was Cardiel at 19%. He does have a base speed of 112, and that is pretty good. Base resistance of 40. Both his attack and defense are the same. They're both 1200. Grand Oak Padraig is going to be in Relentless. I want him to take as many turns as possible. Here are the pieces of gear. We're focusing mainly on speed. You'll notice that I have him stacked with some accuracy. That is because I was doing a showcase for Sand Devil on him and I needed him to proc the Brimstone. So that's why I had some accuracy on him. But uh, I'm gonna change his build a little bit. We'll see what I change it to, but here are his stats right now. He has 54,000 HP. He's getting a lot from the Blessings. A decent amount of attack and defense, but we're not really worried about attack. Defense would be nice. I'm not too uh, worried about it, but it's always nice to have your support champion a little bit tanky as well. 316 speed, you want your Podrick to go fast. But if you can't reach 316 speed, all you need to know about if you're a newer player or if you're a mid-game player and you don't have this kind of gear, do your best to make him go as fast as possible. If you can get him in Relentless gear, go ahead. If you can't get him in Relentless gear, there's nothing wrong with putting him in speed, divine speed, and any other sets to make him really fast because you want him to cycle through his moves as fast as possible. If you're building him with Brimstone in mind, then you're going to definitely want to have some accuracy on him. The reason why resistance is so important is because he is going to be placing a lot of buffs, not only with his A3 and with his A2, but with this move right here. On normal, the Head of Decay is going to have an accuracy of 190, so if you want to resist that, have 300. If you want to break through their resistance and land debuffs, you're going to want to have 145 on normal. For hard, you're going to want to have 195, but you're going to want to have 325 resistance. On brutal, you want 260 accuracy, but you're going to want to have 370 resistance. And then finally, at the highest level of Nightmare, you're going to want to have 340 accuracy and 405 resistance. So just keep that in mind when you're looking to build him and you intend to use him in something like Hydra. I don't know if 
you'd want to put brimstone on him for fire knight if i wanted to make my hard fire knight runs faster i would actually change his blessing from brimstone to soul ring when this champion hits an enemy target decreases their hp to a certain threshold a reaper will appear dealing extra damage equal to the target's remaining hp this looks cool on somebody like Cupidus, where he does have AoEs. Masha Led, where he does AoEs on his A1. Then you see like all the Reapers pop up at once and attack all of the heads at, at once, and that's pretty cool. Ignores defense, as well as damage reduction skills, effects, and buffs. That counts as another hit. I do think that if you're going to be using him in Hydra, it actually might make sense to leave him in Brimstone. So it kind of depends on where, where you're going to want to use him. I, I do want to use him in Hydra, like I said, but I also want him in the Fire Knight. So we'll, we'll see. I do want to bring my Fire Knight runs to a, a lower time. See if I can break that two minute mark. I'm going to go a little bit in depth here and talk about why I chose each mastery. Do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these masteries. So we're taking extra resistance and we're taking improved parry crit hits are going to kill you because crit hits are multiplied damage and they deal a lot of damage decreasing the damage that you receive by eight percent whenever you are hit with that is going to help out quite a bit you could take blast proof and decrease damage received from aoe's by five percent but i found that i survive a little bit more often with improved parry in fact i changed my artak my solo dungeon farmer for hard ice golem improved parry made it a lot better for him we're taking Shadow Heal in case somebody, like the Sand Devil, heals or whoever I'm going up against does any healing. Podrig is going to receive some extra heals as well. Resurgent to have a 50% chance to remove a random debuff from this champion whenever they lose 25%. So if you have like a decreased defense on Podrig, having this proc can remove that automatically when hit. I took this solidarity because we're increasing ally res by five for each buff placed on them by this champion and Grand Oak Podrick is placing a lot of buffs on your team. The heals, the speed boosts, and every time he takes a turn, you're getting uh, increased attack, defense, a shield, or accuracy. So I want to increase the res, especially when going into Hydra, the head of mischief, which steals buffs. You're going to want to be able to resist that. For my resistance, on pretty much all my champions, I would want 325. It's not going to be realistic, but essentially, I would want 325. And I could incorporate a mischief tank. I could make somebody a mischief tank, but that's going to take a little bit more uh, time. Time I don't have. Now, we're taking delayed death to reduce the damage that this champion receives from a specific enemy by 0.75%. From each hit taken, the damage reduction stacks up to 6%. 6% damage mitigation across the entire run is quite a bit. So we want him to survive, we don't want him to die. We're taking Cycle of Revenge to have a 50% chance to increase turn meter whenever an ally is hit with a crit hit. And like I said, we want him to take as many turns as possible. When we're coming down to the support tree, we're taking extra HP because we don't need to take extra accuracy. I would rather make him go faster. Now, Lay on Hands actually does not affect the buff. Maybe I could have taken this one instead, Shield Bearer, to increase the value of a shield because he does place shields, so that is something. I guess you could have taken Exalt and Death, but it's not like I'm taking him... I mean, I guess I could because I, I have him in Fire Knight. Rapid Response gives you a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10% when a buff cast by this champion is removed or expired, uh, expires. I do think that is every single buff, so every time a buff on any of your allies has a expiration or a removal, 30% chance to increase turn meter, again, trying to make him go as fast as possible, take as many turns as possible. Cycle of Magic, obviously you want him to have a chance at the start of every turn, especially with him taking a lot of turns, to decrease the cooldown by one of one of his skills, so we can cycle through his moves faster. Lasting Gifts to extend or have a chance to extend the duration of any buff that he casts. Spirit Haste, I kind of just took just for the heck of it, but aside from something like Sand Devil, uh, I don't really see this having too much play, but it's not like Sniper or Master Hexer was going to help. I guess you could have taken Retribution instead of this, because that's not really, Spirit Haste is not really going to help. I'd probably go back and take Retribution because he does have the A1 chance to decrease the random active ally skill. There's nothing wrong with taking the offense tree too if you are trying to take him into clan boss, because having War Master proc is extra damage. There's nothing wrong with that. But finally, we're taking Timely Intervention, and it increases this champion's turn meter by 20% when an ally's health drops below 25% HP, so that he can cycle through his moves faster and get whatever heals or whatever abilities that need to happen, happen. Let's go ahead and try him in Hydra. Let's take out Tawanarok this time around, and let's just put in Grand Oak. 
We'll just see what happens. Actually, let me set the presets here. We'll just do A1 into A3. I think that's okay. Let's just run it. We're on hard. On auto, let's just see what happens. Yeah, so having two ally attackers, and especially somebody like Grand Duke Podrick with the buffs, is going to probably be pretty neat. Especially with Taurus being able to place so many buffs, I think that's going to be huge. And we're moving pretty fast, actually. So this head of mischief that I'm, I'm usually worried about, uh, probably won't even be able to take a turn. And as you saw right there, I think he tried to steal Grand Oak Podrig's buffs, but I think he either weak hit or Podrig just has too much resistance. So when we're going up against the hard Hydra, like I said, we need a resistance of 325. And I think Grand Oak has like 360 or something like that. When I go up against the decapitated head, you're dealing like 200% more damage, I think. And so it's important to focus on this head. So if you're struggling in Hydra, a good tip for you is dish out as much damage. It's a DPS type thing uh, at a certain point. And you want to make sure you're dealing as much damage as possible within a certain amount of runtime. Look at all these buffs, guys. It's crazy. I think he easily makes it into my Hydra team. He brings the cleanse, the speed, ally attack. And because of... I just noticed this because of Grand Oak Padraig having the Solidarity Mastery. All of my team has so much resistance that I don't know if you guys were seeing it, but he couldn't steal buffs. He couldn't place the poisons on most of my champions because now they have an extra five resistance per buff. Get Padraig taking extra turns and these buffs stay up the entire time. Quick interlude. My uh, cat wants to say hi. Look at him, he was a little fat boy. His little chonkers here. So one thing that I'm noticing here is that he does place the protected brimstone, but it happens so often that it's hitting the decapitated heads. It never really gets a chance to proc. The only time I've seen it proc here is when we're going up against the head that is like really tanky. The head that places ally protect on the whole team and then reflect damage on himself. So what I think I'm going to do is actually change out his brimstone and put soul reap instead 266 is not too bad for um for where we're at but I, I don't know i think this might be a record for me on hard so 267 damage let me take myself off screen here i want to change his blessing let's change him to soul reap and let's see if this actually does make my run faster now, this is contingent, and I looked it up here on Ayumi Love, on the enemy's current HP. So for Soul Reap to proc, if I'm reading this correctly and I'm understanding it correctly, the health points of the Fire Knight, for an example, in this instance, needs to drop below a certain threshold, which would be 14%, 14% of his own HP for this Soul Reap to proc. And then if I have a 6-star Blessing, then it's 20%. So that could be a potential downside to having to wait for us to drop down to 14% on the Fire Knight, but still... I think it would be better. Plus, Razzlevarg already has Brimstone, and they both went into the Fire Knight with Brimstone on them, so I, you know, I think Soul Reap is going to do a lot better for him. So I have the Optimizer. At minimum, especially for Hydra, I like to go for 40k HP, 3k defense. For speed, I definitely want to go 300 and above. For resistance, he seemed to be doing pretty well on hard. I don't know if I would bring him into Nightmare. I sort of already have my Nightmare team set up, but I... I think he could do pretty well in Nightmare. I would need to build him with more resistance probably, but 405 seems to be the sweet spot. Let's just see how fast we can go with 405 resistance. Now because he doesn't require accuracy, because I'm not going to be using Brimstone on him anymore, and I don't really see myself using him in Arena, I'm not going to put Polymorph on him, I think Soul Reap is the way to go. Let's go ahead and optimize, but we're going to make sure we're staying in Relentless. We want to make sure we're still in Relentless gear. Prog as many turns as possible, and let's just see what pops up. So this is not too bad, actually. I might go with this. Taking Pytheon's Frostbite and Lady of Irith's Defense Amulet. So yeah, these are his new pieces of gear. Focusing more on resistance instead of accuracy now, since we don't have to worry about um, Brimstone. Masteries will stay the same. And these are his new stats. So 4k defense, almost 5500 HP, 312. Uh, easily able to change the boots as well as enchant some more glyphs. So that'll probably go up to like 330 maybe. Somewhere around there, 412 resistance. Let's go ahead and take him into the Fire Knight where his true speed will actually be different. 
So in the Hard Fire Knight, he has 332 speed. And then he's going to give himself another 25% boost. So that's like 350, what, 357? And then he has the increased speed buff as well as from uh, Razzlevarg. Let's go ahead and just see how fast we're going to do now with, with Soul Reap. Uh, my best time so far is 212, and we've been doing Hard Fire Night 10 in just about 2, two minutes and 30 seconds on average. So it's a pretty fast run, especially since, you know, I'm coming from Hard Fire Night 6, where I was predominantly only doing Hard Fire Night 6. Now I'm doing Hard Fire Night 10 at 100%. Uh, this, this has not failed, and I think Grand Oak Padraig is uh, key to that. You know, he is able to keep us alive with our buffs, make us fast enough, as well as uh, give us the heals remove any oh nice like the soul reap popped off oh soul reap is also on nut as well as the um restorage of enemy or sorry restorage of destroyed max hp again every time your max hp is destroyed you're healing a lot less so having a restored uh max hp back to full is is huge the, the biggest thing here is the wave clearing sometimes it does it really fast and i'm able to get to the boss in under a minute but sometimes it just happens to be like it doesn't so that's why we're still here taking care of everybody one by one i also have the presets set to only use your a1 after a certain point here so now we're here at the boss about 30 seconds over what i normally see when i am paying attention might, i might add then grand oak padre goes in with another ally attack you see that destroyed max HP. So anytime we're hitting the boss, our max HP is getting destroyed. We got the decrease speed on. It's important to get the decrease speed. We have the leech on. I think that came off of nut. We have a bunch of buffs on. We got brimstone coming from Razzlevarg. We have decreased defense and decreased attack, which is huge because the hard fire knight hits that hard. Um, I also, I noticed this when I was fighting hard fire knight in Centranos is he has, I think it's a passive here. Which one is it? Uh, no, not this one. Let's see. While active, the shield reduces damage by 80%, prevents any deals or being affected by other skills. The shield cannot be removed. Each hit that Fyro takes decreases the strength of the shield. Shield be broken enough times. The shield regenerates every turn. Where is it? Um, the attack. Oh, tainted Fyro heals at the start of every turn. The value of the heal and the damage dealt increases. This is the biggest thing here. Damage dealt increases according to the strength of the shield at the time of the attack. That's why it's so important that you're trying to get the shield down. And trying to reduce the um, the counter, the shield counter. Now, Nut is also here placing the uh, freezes on the boss, which translates into decreased turn meter. Uh, you know, trying to keep the turn meter down the entire time isn't exactly easy. You, you could have uh, uh, two freezers. I have your Carl, but I haven't built him out. I haven't really played with him yet. I wanted to point this out. Someone in the comments in my last video showcasing this team actually told me that if I change the position of Nut and make him last, he is going to be the last one in the turn order for ally attack. So did you guys go for Podrig or did you mainly focus on the Armand's fusion? And if you did, why not check out this guide right here?